On to David Jones. Uh, David, you are the CEO of Havas Worldwide. Tell us what Havas does. Uh, basically, a big global advertising agency network. We've got about 250 agencies around the world and about 12,000 people. So you are an ad man, I as am. they say. I am. And uh, how did you get from where you were to there? Did you know you wanted to be an ad man when you were little? Uh, I, I always say I think people who do well in our industry have three traits. They have um, highly curious minds, short attention spans, and they did all the work for their exams the night before. And that kind of Namely, an entire generation of youths today are all going to become ad people. Exactly. Which is, it's, well, they're not, they're not going to become bankers anymore, so we can actually, we've got a good recruitment source there. Uh-huh. And uh, what you want to talk about today, though, is a bit separate from that or grows out of that? Tell us a little bit about your new uh, It kind of, I mean, I think that what our industry is very good at is changing people's behavior. Uh-huh. And that actually a, a kind of passion of mine is if we, if we want our industry to be more respected and there's a big event called Advertising Week in the U.S. that sort of celebrates the fact that we created Ronald McDonald or, you know, the Pillsbury Dome. And my view is that that's not how you all get respect for our industry. What we need to do is use our ability to change people's behavior for causes that really matter. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to talk about one of those today. And we've seen a lot of those causes over the course the last, of the past two days exactly. looking to, to see about people's behavior and how to improve it. Why don't we turn it over to you for your presentation? Thank, Thank you. you. Great, thank you very much. So if we could pull the slides up. So Michael's presentation was a fantastic example of something that's kind of complete and finished and done. And mine is all about something we're going to do, and all of you in this room can help make it way better. And what it basically is, it's about collaborative creativity to empower the next generation of world leaders. Um, but kind of first, a little story. Uh, this is a wallet. I was in uh, the station in Boston about three or four months ago and I dropped my wallet and, and I was kind of coming from the gym, I was hot, I put my jacket on the back of those sad wheelie bags we have and I got into the train and I realized I'd lost my wallet. And so I spent the next kind of two or three hours running around in a state of panic because when you live in the US and you use your green card, um, they will give you one back in a month so you can't travel for a month and then they will put you into secondary every time you come back into the country for a year, which isn't actually that nice an experience. So what, what, after I'd lost my wallet, I was chatting to a bunch of people on the phone throughout the day and there were kind of two camps. There were those people who said, look, you will n people are fundamentally dishonest. You will never, ever see your wallet again. Um, forget it. And there are other people who said, look, actually, people are, really, you know, people are really good and decent, and you'll get your wallet back. So my question for you, um, this is the first. There's going to be two moments for creative uh, collaboration in this presentation. And this is the first one. It's a, it's a very high-tech poll. Can you stick your hand up if you believe I got my wallet back? Okay, and those of you who don't think I got my wallet back. Does anybody actually have this wallet? Because <laughs> that's cheating. <laughs> well, it was about 66.2% of you thought that I got my wallet back, which allows me to randomly use one of my favorite quotes from Vic Reeves, which says 66.2% of all statistics are made up. But actually, I, I did get my wallet back, and I think, you know, I, I, as you do, I fundamentally believe people are good, and I think one of the great things we've seen over the last two days it's how much good stuff is happening in the world. And I think, um, you know, consumers today, and particularly young consumers, believe that, you know, companies should give back as much as they take. And I think, we, you know, we've seen from the banks what happens if you don't. Um, we did a major global study at the start of last year, and here's one of the findings from it. You know, 86% of people said that it's important that companies stand for something other than profitability. And this was in January. I think if you did it now, it would probably go up to 96%. And I think the, the, the thing that's wonderful about the digital revolution we're, we're living in is that, you know, as most revolutions, it's given people power. Um, and the, the digital consumer will punish people who actually do not you know, live up to the way they expect us to behave today. And I think the, the Time magazine front cover um, was, a, you know, it was a bit of a, a, a gimmicky stump, but it was a fundamental point in there. We, you, the individual, controls the, the information age. And another finding from our study was, you know, 80% of people basically saying that as a consumer, I have a responsibility to basically uh, censure unethical companies. And I think against that, um, that background, you know, what we're seeing is that good business and social responsibility needs to be at the heart, not only of business strategy, but I believe that those examples of where you want to really creatively collaborate and engage people, you need to have social responsibility at the heart and the core of that. And here is my um, patented Venn diagram, which you feel free to rip off. But if you, if you have one circle, which is all about what's a kind of genuine incredible role for the brand and another circle which is you know what what are real issues that consumers care about i think nailing great 
creative collaboration with consumers is about hitting the intersection in the middle. Is there are some companies out there who are talking about what's important to them, but consumers don't care about it. And there are other companies out there who are jumping on the issues that consumers care about, and that's why we're seeing so much greenwashing. And actually, just listening to Michael's presentation, you know, the human race sits very nicely at the, at the center of that. So one of our things we say to our clients is, you know, your brand and your company need to stand for something. And so I guess you know, we, we believe that if we're going to actually practice what we preach, that we should do the same thing. So um, Kate Robertson, who is the chairman of our UK business, is in the audience somewhere uh, around here. And I have created a thing and founded a thing called One Young World. And basically, the idea is really simple. It's a Davos for, for 25-year-olds and younger, that if the world's leaders can't actually make the right decisions and get us to the right place, then given our obsession with youth and given how clever some young people are today, we can actually use them to exert pressure on the world's leaders to do the right things. So the, the inaugural One Young World Summit is going to be in February in London. Um, here are some of the councillors, but the whole thing has basically been built around collaboration. There'll be 1,500 people from around the world who will attend. It's the first ever uh, session that's actually going to bring together people in, in exact proportion to the global population. So it's not going to be 1,500, you know, rich kids from America and the UK, it will be absolutely proportionally representative. And every level of it